Welcome to In the House. My name is Mark Shiver. This is episode number seven. We are on quite a roll. We are getting great feedback. Thank you for all of you who are listening and watching. Uh, and it's just exciting to be able to speak with these members of the North Carolina House of Representatives. And today, I'm really excited. Our guest is Representative John Soka. Uh, and Representative Soka, welcome. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, excited. I've been looking forward to this uh, throughout the week. I know that uh, you've been very, very busy, uh, not so much this week, but last week was a hustle and bustle of activity as you guys were able to close out the short session. Now, let me ask you this. Were you surprised that at the beginning of the short session, Speaker Moore said, we're going to be out of here by July 4th? And lo and behold, you guys were out of there by the 4th of July. Uh, that was very surprising that we actually adjourned by the 4th of July. Um, you know, we did some legislative maneuvering and worked pretty well with the Senate to make it happen. Uh, but still, I've heard that for the last 10 years, we're going to be out by a certain date. And it never happened until this year. So I was surprised. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you had that marathon long session. So I don't think anybody was wanting to do that again, do you? No, that, that was, um, I, you know, the end result was good. Yeah, uh, in, in the budget that we produced, but it was painful, very painful getting to the end product. Now, when I think of Representative Soka, and I'm sure many, many other people do as well, I immediately think uh, fighter for the military, someone who stands up for the uh, military veterans and active duty and their families here in North Carolina. And you have been uh, leading the charge really ever since you started in the North Carolina House of Representatives uh, in working on behalf of the military. And uh, by the way, you were in the Army, you served, so I want to thank you for your service uh, you. as an officer in the Army. But um, is it having served that drives that passion in you to help the military here in North Carolina? Well, it, it is because when you served uh, as long as I did, you understand things from a lot of different perspectives, uh, from the enlisted perspective, sergeant perspective, the officer perspective. Um, even though I was only an officer, I, I spent enough time. I understand what they're thinking, what their needs are. And, you know, North Carolina for the last decade plus has said we're the most military friendly state in the union. And frankly, we didn't live up to it for a number of things. I mean, the first bill that I passed when I was a freshman was respect our fallen heroes. And that dealt with um, making sure that at military funerals, that, that there weren't a lot of demonstrations for two hours before and two hours after. I, I have to go back in time to remember kind of that crazy group out of Kansas and others yeah. who were uh, disrupting military funerals. So that was my first big military bill. And of course the last one, which I've been working on the whole time that I've been in the general assembly, started out as House Bill 83, which was eliminating state income tax for military retirees. And that was finally put into the budget in 2021 and passed. And I, I will tell you that um, before that, I, I was receiving calls from all over the country from people who say they wanna come home, but it was a big deal. And after it passed and the budget had passed, <laughs> I mean, people stopped me in the grocery store at Walmart and they say, thank you. Thank you so much for that. It's made a real difference in my life. And um, you know, that's the kind of feedback that really makes me feel good about doing what I'm doing in the legislature. You know, let's talk about that bill for just a minute, Representative Soka, because there was a big article in Forbes magazine this week. You were quoted in there yeah. about North Carolina being one of the most, if not the most, military friendly states in the country. But the tenor of the article was that the things that state legislatures like North Carolina are doing to help the veterans, particularly in the area of uh, taxing their uh, retiree benefits, uh, is now being looked at at the congressional level. So you guys are moving, hopefully moving the, uh, the feds to, to, to take action to help our veterans and military. You know, and I read that article and I found it very interesting that uh, North Carolina in the last decade plus has been been a leader in um, many different areas that the federal government has copied, other states have copied, and in tax reform, for example, if you go back to the Trump uh, tax reform, 
on lowering the rate and increasing the standard deduction. That comes right out of North Carolina state income tax playbook. Uh, and it's worked great here. Um, and I think it's working well across the country. So it, it's, it, it's good to be recognized as a state that is coming up with good solutions to thorny problems. Uh, and they're good enough that other states and even the federal government is copying us. Now, you've been uh, very active on the House Finance Committee for a number of years, and that involves taxation. And you brought up the issue of tax reform. And it's kind of humorous to me that even now, after years of tax reform, initially the left, they cried, oh, my gosh, we're going to be in debt. We're not going to have enough money. Lo and behold, there's a surplus. All right. Two years later, more tax reform. Oh, no, we're not going to have enough money. Lo and behold, a surplus. <laughs> and they keep doing this. They keep screaming that the sky is falling, but they don't understand economics. That if you put more money in people's pockets, they're going to spend more. There's going to be more taxes uh, involved in, in those uh, situations. And so it's just crazy to me. But uh, the point I want to make is, you uh, and others have been really uh, leaders in the House and in the General Assembly in implementing tax reform. Well, and, and, and thank you for that. And, it, you know, the two points you make is one that we implemented tax reform and two that the, uh, the liberals always say it's the end of the world as we know it. And it never is. I mean, I remember in 2013 when we passed House Bill 998, I was one of the primary sponsors of that. But that was really an effort between everybody in the House and the finance, everybody in the Senate, the governor's team, Governor McCrory at the time, um, his budget director, Art Pope, who we all worked together to do to accomplish tax reform. But and what does tax reform mean? What it meant was lowering the rate, uh, which is fair to everyone, increasing the standard deduction, which helps those uh, who make the least amount of money among us and really taking all the special cutouts and you know, the loopholes out of the tax law, uh, not only loopholes for individual, but loopholes for corporate uh, individual or corporate uh, corporations. I'll give you two examples of that. One was there was a provision in the uh, personal tax law that said, if you receive a golden parachute, so highly compensated executives who get fired or end their contract, a golden parachute in the millions of dollars, uh, it said you won't be taxed on that as North Carolina income tax. And it's like, what? How, how the heck is that? Why is that fair to anybody? That, that came out of personal income tax. Things like that that are patently unfair came out. Uh, one of the things we did in corporate uh, taxes, uh, something's opening up on my screen. Oh, there we go. Um, and, and people don't understand when we had a 6.9% corporate tax rate, large corporations were getting 3% off of that for research and development, a credit, a tax credit. You know, and there were other tax credits. When you take all the tax credits out, it opened up millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars in order to lower the rate. So when you take all the special provisions out for individuals and corporations, it frees up this money to lower the rate which makes us more competitive, then you don't have to give special set-asides to corporations or different groups of people. And it really is inherently much more fair for everyone. And, and I had the fiscal staff do run some numbers for me just uh, last week uh, to, to figure out from 2013 up through this latest budget, what was the total impact of all the different tax reform things we've taken? And it was a reduction in taxes of $21.9 billion wow. since 2013. That's a huge number. Yeah, and yet at the is. same time, we run surpluses. So you can't convince me that lowering taxes leads to the state going into debt because North Carolina has proved just the opposite. Yeah. When you reduce taxes, it increases economic activity. It leads to surpluses. I mean, I, you know... And, and, and I, I've said this numerous times on the floor in debate when the budget comes up, and I still hear the same worn out old issues that, oh, we're going to go bankrupt. And it doesn't. It leads to tax surpluses, more economic activity, 
everybody has more money in their pockets to do what they want to do it, not to take it to the state and me or somebody else has a great idea how to spend taxpayer money. So it's it's been a real success story in my mind. Yeah, you would think that uh, even people on the left who uh, are just enamored with with taxation would understand after 10, 11 years that the sky isn't going to fall. But anyway. Uh, yeah, one would hope, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a facts-based person. If you show me the facts, uh, if you show me where I'm wrong on something, I will change my mind and I will change my vote. But on taxes, um, you know, we have not been wrong on taxes. We've been absolutely dead on. And the results were, quite frankly, um, much better than even I or, you know, other uh, senior finance chairs really expected. I mean, it's, it's truly amazing. Capitalism works, lower taxes work, as long as you're looking out for people at the lower end of the economic scale. And we have done that by continually increasing the standard deduction for single uh, and married jointly. And um, the, you know, it, it just works. Yeah. Let me, uh, and I didn't want to get stuck on the whole interview on taxation, but you make a great point that we hear another uh, song and dance is that, oh, they're cutting taxes for the wealthy, tax cuts for the rich. Well, that's just nonsense because uh, I looked it up and over two thirds of people in North Carolina file using the standard deduction. Right. I use the standard deduction. And so two thirds is a lot more than you would think. And, the, and so what you're saying is the facts are that these tax reform things that you have implemented as a general assembly are helping people like me. And I'm not, I'm not in the 1% of top earners. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so, you were a millionaire, but uh, who knows? I'd like to be, but the <laughs> point is that's just a false statement. You guys it, are helping the middle is. class, hardworking families in North Carolina. And that was the whole intent of tax reform throughout the last decade. And so increasing economic activity. And we also did some other things. Uh, and this goes back uh, four and six years ago. We all know that the economy has transitioned a lot to the online economy. I like the mom and pops and the brick and mortar storefront as much as anyone else. But people tend to buy things more online. And... <laughs> We were not taxing those purchases online when it was coming from wherever. Uh, now, uh, to increase revenue and really for fairness to our mom and pops who exist in the state, right. everything that's purchased online is now they now you now pay as a consumer a, a state income or a state uh, sales tax on it. So you talk about fairness and helping the small mom and pop enterprises in the state. That was huge. There was lots of money being left on the table. Uh, Supreme Court made a decision way fair back in uh, 16, 17. We implemented that. And then we went to a thing called Marketplace Facilitators in 2018, 19 session, which captured the rest of that sales tax from places like Amazon and Etsy and Wayfair, all, all these other places that when we did that, like I say, it leveled the playing fields between our own industries and mom and pop stores uh, trying to sell things online here and places in other states. Why would we not charge sales tax if it's coming into North Carolina from somebody who's selling uh, you or me something from Wisconsin? It just didn't make sense. So yeah. tax reform isn't just about lowering taxes and about income tax. It's about the whole system making it fairer, making yeah. it so that our own industries and mom and pops compete on a fair basis with those uh, industries and smaller businesses in other states. Yeah, um, I want to pivot. Now you represent Cumberland County, District 45. Fayetteville, yep. obviously being the, yeah, Fayetteville obviously being the largest uh, city in your district. Um, as I think about Cumberland County, I-95 runs right through a good portion of the county. Um, I want to get your opinion on all of the economic development that we have been seeing in North Carolina, there was a, a thing that came out this week that North Carolina ranks second in the nation 
in entrepreneurs, new businesses mm -hmm. starting. So that's on the smaller end of the scale usually, but we've got um, uh, the uh, car, Toyota and VinFast right. and others that uh, boom, that uh, supersonic there in, in the triad that are gonna bring these huge economic development uh, uh, opportunities with, you know, they say 5,000 jobs or 1,500 right. jobs. And so from where you sit in Cumberland County, as you look out over the, the landscape, are you concerned at all about the ability of the state from an infrastructure standpoint to facilitate these large things? And can we continue to offer uh, opportunities for these large projects to come in? Uh, and, and that's a great question. I think we can continue uh, opportunities and economic incentives for these large corporations. And you talk about the VinFast, that, and for those people who are listening might not know who that is, that's a, a car maker, mm -hmm. a Vietnamese car maker who's going to build their first major plant uh, outside uh, of Asia right here in North Carolina, 5,000 jobs. Something like a car maker or the Toyota battery factory there's the immediate impact of the 5,000 jobs. Then it's picture that you're dropping a, a rock in the middle of a still pond and the waves come out from that. Um, there are impacts, not just for the direct 5,000 jobs, but as you, the closer into a major project, you know, you get, you sell more gas because more people work there, you need more restaurants, you know, things like that. And then things that go into car makers, well, upholstery, North Carolina is the biggest, uh, manufacturer of car upholstery in the U.S. A lot of people didn't even know that. I didn't so that all spin up. And then you need whatever other parts they need so that it's like this, this wave that goes out from wherever the plant is dropped. Fayetteville is actually in a pretty good location to benefit from both of those mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, projects. Of course, I would love to have one here, but you have to put together a thousand acres uh, that people are willing to sell and develop and things like that. But on a, on a lower level, um, as a measure of the economic activity in Cumberland County, just by itself. Basically, the county is out of all of the, the factory-ready sites that we had. And these are smaller factories, medium-sized factories coming in here. So now our local economic developer, and I've worked real closely with him, he's looking for more land to develop. And, and that's a joint thing between the municipalities in the county and the county government itself and the state to help develop these areas and then make sure that uh, the business opportunities are known throughout the rest of the country and really the world. Wow. There's a lot that goes into it that people probably don't even have any idea that, you know, it <laughs> yeah, might start there, out. There really is. It now is, uh, well, sometimes it makes me mad and sometimes it makes me laugh. Um, uh, come election time, when you see these one-liners on postcards, either for or against you, that come out, it's like X doesn't do enough to do anything, or Y <laughs> does too much. I, I, government is complicated. Economic economic development is complicated. And you have to get in the weeds and understand it to really make a positive impact. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine you sitting around the table in a conference room and. Somebody saying, well, we got to get Miss Bertha Jones to sell her land and she don't want to. And so the whole project is, you know, it's it, it comes down like to that. one person sometimes, yeah. but it's uh, that's why it takes good cooperation between state, uh, county, municipal governments, and not only just the governments, but people on both sides of the aisle. Um, and, and usually Democrats and Republicans alike see the benefit of getting um, a major project in or near their district, then they become a little bit more reasonable in negotiations than uh, maybe on some other issues. Um, not to put you on the spot, but I, I feel like I need to ask you this okay. from a leadership position in the House. Um, I've been around not quite 10 years, and the tenor of the North Carolina Senate has always been a little bit more conservative, a little more start shirt than the House. Um, uh, innovative stuff would, would come out of the House typically uh, in, in, in the time that I've been there. All of a sudden, the Senate, is, after years of saying no, wants to expand Medicaid, and they're making all these arguments for it. And then we saw 
you know, uh, medical marijuana and sports betting. And <laughs> who are these guys? Because it, it was very much against the personality, in my opinion, of the more conservative chamber uh, coming out with these more aggressive types of uh, legislation. Did you find that odd in any way? What were, you, what were you thinking when they start rolling these bills out? Well, I, I've, uh, uh, Tony Rand was a Democrat Senator uh, for a long time down here in Cumberland County. And he always told people in the county, uh, of course he was a Democrat, he said, the enemy is not the Republicans, it's the House. And he was in the <laughs> Senate. And uh, yeah, you, I could say the same thing that the enemy <laughs> isn't the Democrats, it's the Senate. Uh, th there's always this tension between the two chambers, no matter who's in charge. Right. And, and I think part of that is it's a whole lot easier to get uh, everybody to agree when you only need 25 or 30 people to agree, as opposed to when I first came in, there were 76 House members. It's kind of like, uh, you know, a bunch of long tailed cats in a room full of rocking <laughs> chairs running around and you yeah. got to get them all in one place. Um, I think it, some of that is just the, the nature of the chambers and dealing with smaller numbers of members. Uh, I will tell you that I've, uh, I've known Senator Rabin, the rules chair, a good friend of mine. Uh, the medical marijuana thing has been something that he's pushed uh, the whole time he's there. And he finally yeah. got enough other people in the Senate to agree with him. And, and I would liken uh, a push like that to my House Bill 83, which is exempting military retirement from state income tax. I've been working on that for 10 years. Wow. And it took enough time to convince people when some people come and some people go in both chambers to actually convince people to, that it was good policy, it would benefit the state and people to vote for it. So, so some things just take longer time to get an, enough folks to vote to say, yes, I'm gonna vote for that. Um, so I, I, I don't know that there are any more conservative than us, but they've, uh, than the house is. Um, but some of it's just the mechanics, yeah. the mechanics of it. And, and quite frankly, in Medicaid, um, I agreed completely with Senator Berger back when Medicaid expansion was first proposed. I didn't trust the federal government would live up to what they're going to say. Right. Eight years later, we've seen that the federal government has not only lived up to it, but there's been enough implementing legislation at the federal level since that time for them to unwind that um, would be logistically impossible. So circumstances change over time. Yeah. And you know, as a legislator, point. you have to stay current on things to see how things change and how it can benefit the state. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. And, um, you know, I was sitting here thinking uh, back to some of the bills, uh, going back to the military about, uh, for example, being able to transfer a license if you were like a welder in the in the army and you could uh, right. you didn't have to go through all the uh, machinations of, of getting licensed and some of the things that you've done regarding tuition uh, for military uh, veterans and stuff you really have done a lot representative Zoka. Uh, well I, I appreciate uh, somebody noticing that <laughs> I think I have I mean I, you know, you use the welder example. I think even a better example is what we did for military people who had military driver's licenses. Oh, that's right. Uh, coming out and waiving many of the requirements for a commercial driver's license because they've already had a military driver's license driving five ton trucks, 20 ton trucks, 18 wheelers. Yeah. So why make them take a course to learn how to do something they already know? And, yeah. and that's. Um, you know, I and former Senator Meredith worked on that in 2015, 16 session. We got that passed. Um, we got a, a commercial driver's license, a commercial driver's license testing course put here in Cumberland County because we have so many trucking counties in Fort Bragg's here, uh, which made it very easy for people to go get their CDLs. Yeah. I mean, it, it's the little things like that that, that most people don't know happen but it has huge impacts on individuals coming out of the military, not only them, but on the industries that are going to hire them, which yeah. leads to them staying in North Carolina and contributing to our economy. So, I'm, you know, there's, I mean, the nursing compact, the physical therapist, compact, it goes on and on and on the, uh, the things that we have spearheaded in the, in the house 
that really help statewide. So, uh, I was going to ask you about that. Talk about the nursing compact. That's a pretty significant bill. Uh, that, that was a very significant bill. I was proud to be a primary sponsor on that. There was an existing nursing compact that had 20 some states in it. And uh, what, what, what a, a compact is, it's an interstate compact, meaning that different states all sign up and agree to do certain things is what it means. Uh, the nursing compact that had been in effect, it was old and outdated. Uh, North Carolina was one of the leaders with the nurse association uh, and myself and other members leading the legislative charge to redo it uh, to make it easier for nurses to transfer their licenses between states. For example, uh, people coming from Fort Carson or Fort anywhere here to Fort Bragg, if their spouse is a licensed nurse, um, what the compact does is says, if you're coming from a state where you're licensed, like Texas, where I recognize your license member of the compact, you do not have to get relicensed in North Carolina. So that spouse can begin to work day one when they arrive in North Carolina. Wow. It's a huge, huge deal. Yeah. Uh, last count, uh, this isn't an updated number, but uh, I checked this two or three years ago, and there were 17,000 registered nurses who are taking advantage of this, uh, either by being in North Carolina or North Carolina registered nurses uh, working in another state. The overwhelming majority of them were somehow tied to the military. So it's, it, it, it's that kind of thing, that kind of legislation that, that helps individuals and helps the state. And I, I was proud to be a member of that one and the physical therapist uh, compact, we did that one. And, uh, and there've been several others. Uh, Representative Wheatley picked up on, the, uh, on that. I was a co-sponsor on that one that we just passed. So, I, I mean, there've been a number of these things that help the military and help you know, the civilian population as well. Um, <clears throat> I, I wish we had more time, but I uh, try to keep, uh, you know, these. Uh, yeah, nobody wants to listen to you and me talking for three <laughs> hours. <but that's laughs> well, I want to uh, take an opportunity to think about um, somebody who is in a pretty public leadership position like yourself as a uh, doing a lot of meaningful legislation for folks. And some of that is kind of broad, like tax reform is, affects the whole state, uh, stuff for veterans and military, that's a statewide thing. But as a representative of the Cumberland, Cumberland County, you get an opportunity to help people who call upon you to help them, they, they've got something going on in state government. Talk about that process. Is, is, is that important to you, obviously? Oh, absolutely. I mean, constituent service, uh, I, I'm, I don't know if I'm unusual in other elected members, but if you go to the state website and look me up, there's two phone numbers there, my office number in Raleigh uh, and my cell phone. And people, some people think I'm crazy for putting my cell phone out there, but I. If people have a problem, I'm their elected representative. And if I can help them resolve that problem without going through 29 different layers of whatever, you know, I do that. I had somebody call me last week. He had a property tax issue at the Cumberland County Tax Office that we're working on. And, you know, people don't abuse it. People don't call my cell phone unless they really want to talk to me and they have a real problem. So it helps me speed up the process of figuring out if it's something, you know, is it a state problem? Is it a local problem? Sometimes it's just sending people to uh, the right agency to work things out. Uh, I do get a fair number of calls uh, about issues with the VA, the Veterans Administration, and, and, and that's a federal issue. So I give them, uh, you know, their congressman's contact number, their US senator's uh, contact number who both, um, you know, Congressman Hudson and Senator Tillis uh, both work very hard at helping uh, people work through VA issues. So sometimes it's, it's as simple as that. And where they might have made five different phone calls, I can send them right off the bat to where they need to go to. Yeah. So, uh, you, you know, and I, a lot of that I have to uh, give credit to my legislative assistants, uh, Bev Slagle, Beverly Slagle. She's, she's an expert at nowhere to, um, 
who to call and how to get things resolved quickly. So we're kind of a, a, a tag team in working that. Yeah, I think a little known secret about the General Assembly is those legislative assistants are pretty doggone important. They absolutely are. Uh, absolutely. Well, Representative Soka, uh, we're out of time. I appreciate you taking time today and I enjoyed thoroughly our conversation. Hopefully uh, we could do it again in the future. Uh, best to you and thank you for your service, sir. Well, thank you, Mark, uh, so much for taking the time to uh, talk with me today. And uh, whoever views this, you can always get hold of me uh, either at my office. And again, go to ncleg.gov. You can find out who your elected officials are at the state level for the House and the Senate. If you look me up, two phone numbers there. One's my uh, office in Raleigh. The other is my cell phone. And I respect people. So uh, if you got an issue, give me a call. Either one. If it's urgent, call my cell phone. If it's something routine, I'd prefer you to call the uh, 919 number. But uh, whatever you want to do, give me a holler. Let me know what's on your mind. All right, will do. Thank you for joining us uh, on In the House. And thank you.